Psalm chapter 27. I hope everybody has been able to um, read some and uh, for themselves. Uh, I've enjoyed this series uh, um, in, in the book of Psalm, and I've learned a lot. And uh, today we're going to be talking about, um, I, well, I entitled it, um, The Lord is My Light and Salvation. And so in this psalm, uh, David actually talks about several things. Uh, but just remember that the psalms were written for worship. They were, it, they were poetic, and they were written uh, 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 primarily for worship, for praising. For, uh, and I think we can learn some truths uh, in this psalm uh, and that we can apply uh, in our current uh, situations uh, uh, even now. We're not told exactly what circumstances uh, prompted the writing of this psalm. Uh, but, you know, David, uh, he was um, uh, involved in a lot of, you know, different wars, different people um, fought against him, uh, especially in the beginning of his, when he was on the throne. Uh, and, and he had a lot of, uh, uh, you know, difficult times when he was running for his life and um, things like that. And, uh, and some things that he brought on himself. Uh, but some things he did not. And so I think we can learn one thing from this, uh, from this psalm and all the other psalms that we've studied that sometimes uh, circumstances in our life are not necessarily brought on by things that we've done. Uh, you may not have done anything in particular to cause you to be in the, what you're in. Uh, for, you know, for instance, some are in uh, natural disasters like earthquakes like it's going on in Turkey right now. It was nothing of their own doing. They, they, they didn't do that on their own. They didn't cause that. It was, they were just in the middle of, of something that, that just happened uh, in their life. And now they're having to uh, struggle and deal with that. Uh, uh, and I'm pretty sure you've uh, had things in your life uh, the same way or similar situations like maybe not natural, or nat natural disasters, but um, maybe there was... Uh, Un, you know, you didn't know a, a health issues or your job, uh, you may have lost a job or something or, or something else. Uh, it could be anything uh, that we can go through that I think this psalm can pertain to. But from reading this psalm, um, there are a few things I think that we can learn about David's, uh, one thing that David had confidence um, in the Lord. Uh, David deals, uh, reveals in this psalm some truths about the Lord that I think you and I can apply. And one thing for sure uh, is that David never uh, shut the Lord out of his life. Uh, the Lord was always a part, uh, uh, an integral part of his life. He, he constantly went to the Lord in prayer. He relied on that relationship uh, with the Lord, and it started long before he ever became king or was set on a throne. And you can we can learn that through the scriptures and studying uh, about David. And so the, these things are still true today. These things that we can apply to our life today. Today, David was always open with uh, with the Lord about his fears. He was always open with the uh, Lord about his doubts, about his struggles, about his sinfulness. Uh, within himself and about his enemies and how he struggled uh, with his enemies and how his uh, enemies uh, uh, encamped him. And, and we're going to be talking about that a little bit in this song. And no matter how hard life got for David, David always turned to the Lord. And I don't know about you, but the past 26 Psalms that we have studied, not one time have I ever recalled reading that David blamed God for any of the circumstances and troubles and trials that he ever went through. He never blamed God for any of those things. But he always turned to the Lord for strength. It seems that when life got uh, tough uh, for David, then David's faith in the Lord got stronger to me. Whenever he, got, whenever he was dealing with difficult times, his faith got stronger. His confidence got stronger. He learned things. 
So could it be that during the darkest of times, during those darkest hours of our life, that God can provide us unimaginable strength to get us through whatever situation that you and I go through. Because I think that's when God really reveals himself in our life. It's through those struggles that we deal with. It's, that's when we grow uh, in the Lord, really. That's when we are, as scripture says, put to the test. What we have learned when you are put to the test, when you are put under the pressures of life and seeking, are you going to be able to withstand? And David was able to withstand, and I think we can learn that from him today. So even when it appears that life is not treating us fairly and the storms of life catch us off guard, I think we can learn to trust in the Lord as David trusted in the Lord. Which brings us to question, when, when times get tough in your life, who do you turn to? Or what do you turn to? Yeah, that's what we want to be, yeah. We want to turn to God. And that's what we hope that we can learn uh, this morning. Verse 1 says, and I'm just going to take one verse at a time uh, as we go along. Verse 1 says that the Lord is my light. And my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is. In this verse, we see, first of all, that, uh, that the Lord is light, and that the Lord is salvation, and that the Lord is strength. Right? We see that he, He's light, He's salvation, and He's strength. And all these statements are true, about the Lord. But all these statements are not true pertaining to each and one of us or anybody outside these walls. Yes, the Lord is salvation. And yes, the Lord is strength. And yes, the Lord is light. But He has to be your Lord. You see? He has to be your Lord. David said, he's my Lord, he's my light, he's my salvation, and he's my strength. Before the Lord can be any of these things to us or to any individual in this world, they have to have surrendered themselves and submitted themselves to the Lord. They have had to, at one time in their life, acknowledge their sinfulness and ask God to forgive them of their sins and allow God to become Lord of their life. And at that moment in time, then yes, the Lord is your salvation. He is your light and He can be your strength. David is affirming that the foundation of his life was built on nothing more than the Lord Jesus Christ to us today. Jesus is our Savior. He is our Lord, and He should be our foundation. But during this time, David, uh, he trusted in God and all that he was in everything that he did. On the Sermon of the Mount, if you can recall, Jesus preached a parable about two builders. One built their house on the sand and one on a rock in Matthew 7 verses 24 through 27. That's the end of that sermon on the mount. It reads, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will like him to a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain descended the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great, it says, was its Fall. You see, Jesus said, a wise man is one who hears and applies 
his words to their life. That's a wise man. One who hears and applies his words to their life. That person, he says, will be able to handle the worst storms that life could ever bring to you or that you would ever go through if we do these truths. That's what we learn, I believe, from David. David learned at a young age that he could never go wrong in trusting in the Lord. The Lord, he said, is my light. And that light, of course, uh, means, it can mean uh, a few things. Uh, of course, it, can, it reveals things, right? Light can reveal things. It shows us. It can lighten our path. It can show us where we're going wrong. Uh, it's, a, it's, like, it's a revelation, in other words. The light reveals things, especially when you're walking through the darkness. Or if you walk into the room, it's pitch dark, you turn on the light. And it shows you things that you need to be aware of so that you don't trip over or walk into. And that's what the light of God, the light of Jesus that, the, that lives inside of every believer, that's what that light does. Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. And that light shows uh, this world, a sinful world, First, if it, when, when the Holy Spirit uh, came to you, it showed you your sinfulness. It showed you your need for a Savior, that you needed it to turn to someone for help. And that's what the light does. The Lord can be your salvation, but He first has to reveal Himself to you. He reveals Himself to you. David learned to trust in the Lord because he had revealed himself. The Lord revealed himself to David long before this particular time or instance in his life. See, David already knew about God. He had already uh, submitted himself to the Lord. He had already made a, a, a purpose in his heart that he was going to follow God and God alone. David committed himself to the, long, to the Lord long before he ever became king of Israel. He was taught that at a young age. And if we're going to have the confidence that David had in the Lord, then we must also believe that the Lord is capable of delivering us from anything, any stronghold that we might have in our life. We have to trust and believe that God cares and that God will deliver us when we need deliver and he's going to walk through walk with us through those tough times in our life he may not take those things away from us but when we get through those things then you and I are going to be like David and we're going to be stronger in our faith and we're going to learn how to have confidence no matter what happens David believed the Lord that he was the only way out for him he trusted that the Lord was the only way that he could be delivered from his enemies. And that's why David says, In whom shall I, uh, or who shall I fear, or of whom shall I be afraid? He said, If the Lord is my light, if the Lord is my salvation, and the Lord is my strength, then I have nothing to fear, and I have no one to be afraid of. No circumstances to be afraid of. Verse 2 says, what, uh, When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. David says, or uh, reveals another truth here about the Lord. One is that the Lord knows how to deal with our enemies and our foes. He knows how to deal with the circumstances or any situation that you and I are in today as he did with David back then. The Lord knows our situations and he knows what we need when we need it. David said, my enemies came up against me and they tried to devour me. They tried to devour me. That's what They tried to eat up my flesh. That's what he's talking about there. They tried to, uh, to devour or to kill me, but they what? Failed. They stumbled. 
they stumbled. They were not able to succeed. They were not able to carry out uh, their plans. And we learned in other Psalms how uh, David's enemies plotted uh, with each other and then plotted how they were going to destroy him and to kill him, to remove him from his throne. Even his own son was part of that at one time. But they failed. They failed to carry out. Why? Because what God puts in place, when God puts a plan in place, there is nothing on this, in this world or on this earth that can stop it. Nothing. God's plan was that his son was going to come and that he was going to pay a penalty that you and I could not pay for. And he did. And his plan is still in work today through you and I. Through you and I. David's enemies could not uh, stand against him. They could not succeed with their plots. They stumbled and they failed. Psalm 23, 4. You remember when we read, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will, what, fear no evil. For you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. David believed this. David trusted in this. He learned that through the darkest times, through these times when these enemies and foes tried to devour him, that he had no reason to fear. We have a hope that our enemies do not have. And that's in Jesus Christ today. Verse 3. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. So what we see here, this, this, the, the picture here, uh, that, we, that an army may encamp me back then during, uh, and, and still even today, uh, uh, during wartime, what will happen a lot of times is these uh, armies would surround a city and then they would cut off any avenues going in and out of that city, which would eventually, if you think, you know, think about what would, that, what would happen eventually is they're going to start running out of food. If there's no way for supplies to come in, no way to get out, they run out of food. They begin to starve. And you know when, when you start running out of food, what's going to happen? The morale is going to start weakening and falling. People are going to get weary. And they're going to just give up eventually. That's the idea, right? To stifle them out. It's to make them give up. It's to make them lose hope. But David, read this for a second now and think about what David is saying. He says, though that might happen to me, though my enemies may try and to encamp me, they may try to surround me and that, so that my heart will fear. He says, my heart shall not fear. They're not going to succeed. I'm not going to give in to their plots. They may try to raise war against me, but I'm going to have what? Confidence in the Lord. He is going to see me through. David knew, yeah, it's, war is tough, and times gets tough, but he served a God that can do anything, do anything, and he trusted in him. He learned to trust him even during these hard times. He says, I will not grow weary because my hope is rooted in the Lord. That's what David is saying. I think we can learn that uh, today. Don't grow weary in whatever you're going through. Let your hope be rooted in the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will see you through it. Verse 4, one thing I've desired. What's, he says, one thing I've desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. One thing I've desired, I have desired, David says, is to what? Be near my Lord. That's what he's saying. To be near my Lord, to be in his uh, presence. They would 
um, uh, this suggests that David's decision here was not made at this moment in time. His decision or his desire to dwell with the Lord was not made during his circumstances, I guess you could say, during the, his uh, hardest times or his struggles uh, with his enemies. This decision was made long before he started going through all of this. This decision was made uh, when he was at home, when he was still living under the roof of his mother and his father and his brothers. He made a commitment then uh, to serve the Lord. He wanted to, his desire was to dwell in the house of the Lord. Remember Psalm 23? Dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. That's what his desire was. I, I want my desire to be that. To always be in the presence of the Lord no matter where I'm at. And that we can have that. That's what the Holy Spirit uh, that dwells in us. If you're a child of his, he puts his Holy Spirit in you. He is with us every day. Everywhere we go. He wants to dwell in his house. David says, the one thing I desire most in my life is to be in the presence of the Lord. Paul says something similar to that in Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. He says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul's desire was to serve and to be with the Lord all the time, no matter what he was doing. And our desire should be the same. Verse 5 says, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. David says during this time of, in, of trouble he wants to be in the Lord's Tabernacle. The tabernacle was where was a place for worship, but it was also where the presence of the Lord was, right? This was where his presence dwelt. And David's desire was to worship the Lord in his dwelling place so that he could find refuge and so that he could find strength uh, from his Lord. He says, I shall set, he shall set me high upon a rock. And I think we've talked about that before, what refuge or, or, or what refuge meant. And it's when the Lord, it says, sets us up on a mountain. It's like on mountain ridge. He sets up, us up high so that our enemies can't get to us. That's what that, that's what that picture is. He sets me high upon a rock. He sets me out of reach. Uh, of my enemies for so that anything that my enemies tries to do to me they can't harm me David wanted to worship the Lord praise the Lord in the midst of his storms you know that's you can find comfort in the Lord when you when you are struggling no matter what you're going through in your life, when you're starting to struggle with anything, if you just take a moment, it could be a scripture maybe that you that the Lord brings back to you. It could be a song that you know, that you've taught, been saying, that you've sang all your life in church, or you heard on the radio. He, you can draw strength and you can draw comfort from those things at that particular time. God can do amazing things for us even in the midst of our struggles if we let him and we turn and, and trust in him. Nothing should stop us from worshiping our Lord even while we're going through 
tough times or even while we're going through the, uh, through the storms or the struggles in our life. Don't allow those things to zap us from the most important thing, and that's Jesus, the Lord. He's our Savior, and He's our Redeemer. He's our Rescuer, and He's our Brother. He loves us. Verse 6 says, My head shall be lifted up. I like that, that picture. It's a picture there. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. You see, another, uh, uh, this is another verse. I want to worship my Lord. I want to, I want to sing praises unto Him because when, that, when I get to the point in my life when my head starts to, to sag down, when my head starts to fall from depression, uh, He's going to reach down and He's going to lift my head back up. And He's going to put a song in my heart. He's going to put joy back into my heart. Yeah, it's going, life is a struggle. But the Lord can put joy in our hearts so that we will have a desire to praise him as David had a desire to praise him here. He doesn't lose hope, but he looks up to the Lord. Verse 7 through 9 says, Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. David is revealing uh, what he did during the most trying times uh, of his life. Life. David, the king of Israel, faced uh, many difficult times, and all of us will face difficult times, that, no doubt. If you're not facing them now, it will, maybe, it, they will come later, because that's part of life, right? We, we, we have a, a, a season of when everything is good, then all of a sudden we go through these uh, seasons where something bad might happen, or at least something... Uh, that we struggle with. But don't lose hope. But just remember that those seasons only last for a little while. They don't last forever. Thank God. Or we won't be able to make it. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to make it um, uh, if it didn't. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18 says, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and external weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Temporary. They are temporary. But the things which we are not, which are not seen, are eternal. You see, what you're going through right now, Paul is saying in these, this verse, is temporary. Those, these, those seasons of bad times are temporary. Those are things that do not last forever. But it's during these times that we are built up. It's during these times that we are strengthened. If we do as David did, if we turn to the Lord and trust in Him, difficult times is going to come. But there is light around the corner. There's light. You can. Yeah, all right. Yep. You can praise God in the in the bad times too. Exactly. Yep, David said in verse 8, he would seek the Lord's face. 
David prays to the Lord not to hide his face because he says, you, Lord, are my rock. You are my salvation. Don't hide your face from me because he also recognizes, I think, in that verse when he says, don't hide your face, is he recognizes his sinfulness. He, he recognizes uh, that he is only human and now he don't make the right choices all the time. But it was one good choice that he made and it's one good choice uh, that we can make and that is to trust God all the time. Trust in him and we will never go wrong. Verse 10 says, While my father and mother and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. And I thought that was pretty strange because I don't know about you, uh, and, but I don't recall ever reading where David's uh, mother or father ever forsook him, uh, per se. It's, I, don't, I haven't read it. Uh, and if you know, you can show me later or point that out to me. But let's just, uh, for, uh, I've kind of looked at it a little different way. So yeah, we're all human, right? Mamas and daddies, we don't always make the right choices. We don't do the right things all the time. I'm not perfect. I'm not a perfect father. I don't, I don't uh, pretend to be. And yeah, I may let my son down. He hasn't told me I've done that yet. But you, you, you all uh, probably had similar situations with your parents. They may have let you down. They may not always done the right things. We may have uh, family, which are the closest ones to us, right? Fail us. But I think what David is trying to say here is there is one who will never fail you. There is one that we can count on 100% of the time, all the time. He never fails us. And that's the Lord. He's going to take care of you. He's going to take care of us even when it may seem like the, those who is, a, who is closest to us fail us because we're human. We're going to make uh, bad choices sometimes. But thank God the Lord never makes a bad choice. He never makes a mistake, right? All things, uh, he said, if we trust in him, all things will work out for his good, for his glory. And we're going to be strengthened in the process. I think that's what David says here in verse 10. Verse 11 says, he likes, again, like last time we talked, he likes to teach us his ways. He says, teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in the smooth path because of my enemies. We, talk, we talked about that in a psalm before, how God loves to teach sinners his way. And, and in that verse, we, t we said that when it says he likes to teach sinners in his way, it's, it's those are the ones who acknowledge that they're sinners. Those are the ones who acknowledge they need his help or they need God's help, right? He loves to teach us his way. And that's what David is asking the Lord here. He, he wants his, in other words, his path uh, to be smooth. You see, teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in the smooth path. Sometimes our path ain't smooth. Sometimes they're rocky. We talked about that. Uh, when the shepherd leads his flock in the 23rd Psalm, sometimes that path, that valley, uh, that shadow of death, that path is going to be rocky sometimes. But the end of that path is, is going to be worth getting to. We keep following the shepherd, in other words. In other words, he says, right now I'm walking on a rocky road. This is what uh, David is saying here. But I eventually, I want you to smooth out my path because I need your help. My enemies, he says, are the cause because of my enemies. See that at the end? He says, my enemies are the cause of this path. My enemies are the cause of me walking down this, this rough patch in my life, I guess you could say. But David says, I'm going to trust that the Lord is going to deliver me because he said he was my salvation and that's another that's what salvation is it delivers us salvation uh, saves us from something or delivers us from something in this case he's delivering David from the hands of his enemies verse 12 do not deliver me uh, to the will of my adversaries 
for false witnesses have risen against me and such as and such as breathe out violence. Sometimes you're going to be treated uh, wrongly in this life, like David has. David was accused of things that uh, he didn't do. This is only because um, we live in a, a, a wrecked world, right? You know, bad things happen because we live in a wrecked world. Sin affected not only mankind, but it affected everything else. And so sometimes uh, difficulties happen, but we have to uh, trust God. Life gets hard, not because of anything that you and I did, like I said a while ago. It just happens. But know when it does happen, if you are a child of the Lord, we can be like David, and we, can, we have a hope, and we can trust, and that the Lord is going to be right there by our side. Verse 13, he says, I, will, I would have lost heart. You see that? I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. David is saying, if I hadn't decided to put my trust and faith in the Lord a long time ago, there is no way, he said, that I would have been able to handle the situations that I'm having to go through right now. I, would not have, I wouldn't be able to face my enemies. I wouldn't be able to face my storms. If it wasn't for you, Lord, I would have lost heart if it wasn't for the Lord. That's what David is saying. I would have lost heart if it wasn't for the Lord. And then verse 14. Wait, he says. Wait on the Lord. Be, good, be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. David ends uh, with a, a valuable uh, lesson I think you and I can learn about life and about how to walk through life, how to have that faith that we need to walk through this life. He, waiting is, is, is hard. To wait on the Lord can be hard. Uh, we, 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 we live in an uh, instant. Everything is instant now, right? We have fast everything, fast food. Uh, we want it instantly, you know, on the go. We don't want to take our time. Uh, I want it now. And say, but David says, sometimes we have to wait. See, God don't work on that kind of timetable, unfortunately. Uh, sometimes we pray for things and pray for things, and it just don't come quick enough uh, for us. And I've been there. Uh, I understand that. David says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Be patient, in other words. That word wait also can be interpreted uh, hope, hope on the Lord, hope in the Lord, be of good courage. He says, he shall strengthen your heart, hope, I say, on the Lord. He is our hope. If he's our hope, then we have nothing to fear, not in this life. I want to leave with this uh, final verse in 1 John 4, 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you, God, that you are our hope. Lord, may we never forget that, yes, life can get hard. Life can get tough. And sometimes I can cause life to be harder than what it needs to be. But sometimes it's not because of anything that I've done. But, God, may we turn to you in whatever we're going through today. And ask you to, uh, to just be Lord of our life. If we haven't never asked you to be Savior, God, I pray that you would forgive us 
of our sins that we may that you may be Lord of my life, that I may commit myself uh, to you and you alone and trust that you're going to get us through whatever we need to get through. Lord, I pray as we uh, leave this place, Lord, that these truths can be applied to our life, that your light may shine in us as we walk and as we are teaching others who you are. I pray that they can see that light and that it will draw them closer to a relationship with you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. All right.